So, hello everybody. Um, my name is Arvin Schnell. I work for SUSE Linux. And I'm going to give you a presentation about ButterFS and Snapper. Um, I'm the developer or main developer of Snapper, not ButterFS. So, um, to give you or to take one question, always ask about ButterFS right away. I don't know when, I don't know when ButterFS FS check will be ready. <laughs> you have to ask Chris Mason. So, first part of my talk will be about ButterFS. I'll show you some of its features with the um, I uh, will concentrate on the sub-volumes and snapshots because those are needed for butter, uh, for Snapper. So, ButterFS has a few um, um, new um, features not found in other file systems so far. Um, we have, first of all, data and metadata is written copy on write. That means when you modify a file, the new blocks or the modified blocks are first written to disks. They don't overwrite the old blocks. This gives you a um, nice transaction safe file system. Then we have checksums for data and metadata. That is when you have a system with um, RAID, which um, Butterfuss also supports. It, will, it can keep um, two well, first of all, it keeps um, checksums for everything and it will detect if there are bit errors. And it can even correct those bit errors if you have two copies of the data on your disks, which then, of course, needs um, some RAID setup. This detection is done on the fly, but it can also be done in a batch job. Multiple device support um, is here a bit different in ButterFS than a normal um, DM rate because um, it, it's not like an on-block device layer. It just assures you that it has two copies of your data. Um, but the disks can have different size. For example, you can have one disk with one terabyte and two with um, half a terabyte, and then it will um, place the data so that you have always two copies if you want. The rate level can also be different for data and metadata. Um, yes, online resize and defragmentation. Defragmentation is um, rather important for ButterFS because this copy on write of course, leads to more um, def uh, leads to more fragmentation. So next then is subvolumes and efficient snapshots. I will show a separate slide for them later. Compression per file, um, yeah, it's nothing so special. It has optimizations for SSDs, trim support. And this trim support can also be um, on the fly when the blocks are um, not needed any longer or it can be done in a batch job. And the last feature here is in-place conversion from X3 to and X4 to ButterFS. Um, here the converted data is first place in a snapshot, so it's even possible to go back to X4 if you don't like it anymore. So some of the planned features um, in work in progress is send receive tool, which allows you to copy one ButterFS file system um, across a network or something like that. It's done or it will be like with ZFS. Um, tiered storage, uh, next one. This means you can have several disks. For example, you can have one big um, conventional drive and one smaller fast solid state disk and then you can keep for example the metadata on the SSD and some hot um, so hot files that are used frequently 
Um, so it's more like more or less used than like caching. Well, there's are also other techniques to um, get this, like bcache or flash cache. And later on, they also want to um, implement data deduplication, where it um, scans the, the hard disk, searches for identical blocks, and then just um, keeps reference counting them. Uh, as far as I know, it's not in uh, a plant. Oh, it was about encryption. So the next, uh, the yes. No, um, it will be two special tools sent. You can call on the command on the uh, system where you have your file system, and receive on the other side and it will be very efficient because Butcherf knows uh, where it metadata has changed or data has changed. I mean in the end it does the same or for the user it looks like rsync but it will um, as far as I know be more efficient. So sub volumes and snapshots. Um, what is a subvolume? A subvolume is a separate internal file system root and it's sharing the same data space like your main volume. That and when you create a subvolume, it first of all it looks like a um, directory in your file system. Uh, so that those two things together don't really make much sense. Um, the next thing that's interesting, subvolumes can be mounted separately at any place in your file system. And now it gets very exciting with snapshots. A snapshot is simply a subvolume containing the data of any volume at a given point of time so when you create a snapshot. And this is done very efficient. Um, creating a snapshot only writes some metadata. No data is really otherwise um, is copied. And it creates a, a snapshot is always um, exactly of one single subvolume. So if you have several subvolumes and you want to snapshot all of them, you have to do the, so manually. And snapshots can be read write or read only. Yes, so I now want to present a demo of this because it's very important for the rest of the talk. So, um, first of all, I will make a ButterFS file system on a Bigger, okay. <laughs> I'm not a KDE user, so is that big enough? Or yeah. too big? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave it here. So, well, it <laughs> still says experimental. And this is a for just for the note, uh, OpenSUSE 12.1 plane installed. So now I have a file system. I'm going to mount it at ButterFS. So nothing special here. I can just for the demo create a file. And yeah, now I'm going to create a subvolume. Only um, it's always this butterfs command. It's not so difficult. You just say create, and where you want your subvolume to be. 
And as I said, it looks like a directory. And we'll also touch a file here. And now we can look at the file system. Oops. That's wrong. Yeah, you see um, one subvolume was created. They have um, IDs. They start at 256 or something like that, and the path is log. Um, yeah, now we're gonna make a snapshot. It's also butterfs subvolume snapshot, and then we give the file system butterfs or where it's mounted actually, and the name. Oh, so was very fast. It's also fast if the file system has more data in it. We can again list our subvolumes. They are now here completely um, identical, whether it was a subvolume or a snapshot. And now we have here a directory, a new one called snapshots. You see the file FOSDEM, but you don't see the file messages I created in log because that's in a different subvolume. So what we can do now is we can mount the oh no first I wanted to I can now unmount our file system. And mount the subvolume, uh, the snapshot. So SDA9, option, subvol, ID, it was 258, butterfs. And yeah, well, it's not so interesting. I haven't modified the file system in any way. But interesting is, that now still the um, log and uh, the log directory is empty. Um, yeah, mount. So I hope everybody has a rough idea now what a snapshot and a sub volume is. This is now a per default, it's read-write. Well, automatically not. You have to make it manually. But this is exactly what Snapper does for you. So then we at SUSE we had, um, well, what can you do with these snapshots? Rollback, of course, comes to mind. And rollbacks have been an issue um, for, I don't know, maybe a decade from package installation. Um, something goes wrong, you have installed a version and suddenly your um, database doesn't work anymore or whatever, and you want to make simply go back to the, old, to the old state. Now there are two um, possible um, ways, or at least we find two ways to use those snapshots for. Um, one thing is you could just reboot, um, shut down your system, 
or well, first you have to make, of course, a snapshot of a good state, and then when you when you realize that you've messed up, or the distribution has messed up, and you installed an update, um, you could shut down your system and mount the sub volume, uh, mount mount the good snapshot with this sub vol ID. This is um, works pretty well. You have to take care of a few things, but it one of the points is you it requires a reboot. It's very fast, except of the reboot, and rollbacks are only possible for the whole system, or at least for sub volume. So you can um, put some directories, for example, varloc. <coughs> can make a subvolume for them so that they aren't rolled back. But still you cannot um, 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 split files in, in, in your library directory, something like that. Just so either way you go all the way back or, or not. And the other way um, that's possible, you, you keep your um, good snapshot and then copy the files back to the <coughs> main subvolume. Um, here you have the advantage that the user can select which file to roll back and it requires no boot. But of course the copying is a bit slow. But um, that's not so bad because Butterfish also can clone files where just the metadata is uh, modified. And so it's still space efficient and rather fast. By the way, this cloning is also integrated in the standard copy command on your shell. So if you have a file system with WhatFS and um, say copy and complete DVD, it just takes a blink of a second. So at SUSE then we um, went for the second solution, copying individual files and our setup is this way we take for um, when you start Yast, for example, we take a snapshot before Yast modifies the system and after it has modified the system. This way we can identify files that were affected by this um, run of the of, of Yast or or um, Zipper, and then you can see what, what has changed at, um, exactly in this time frame. Um, additionally, we make automatic creation of snapshots um, every hour, and we delete old snapshots in a cron job. We have created some um, subvolumes with a standard installation, like var lock and var spool and server, which we think it's not so appropriate to roll back. I mean, if you roll back var spool, you might get your printout again or something like that. And additionally, boot is not on butterfs, so you have to take care um, when you roll back your kernel. It's not so bad because um, we can install multiple kernels, and so this is also taken care of. So, um, now we have created this new tool, Snapper, to take care of all these issues. So we have a user interface, we have a command line tool, and the Yast integration. We create snapshots from Yast and super activities. We create hourly time, snap, uh, time snaps. Um, we do automatic cleanup. For once, there are two algorithms for cleanups. One is this timeline, where we then keep the first snapshot of every day, up to 10 days. Then we keep the first one every month and the first one every year. <coughs> and otherwise, we have this number-based one, which we use for the snapshots generated by Yast and, and um, Zipper where we just keep 50 um, snapshots. Mm. We, you can create different configs 
for each ButterFS subvolume. So you can, for example, um, give different, for example, if you have your home directory on ButterFS, you can um, keep more, more of the daily or hourly um, snapshots, whatever you want to. Snapper also supports X4, but we don't promote this because um, it needs a special kernel and user land tools. And yeah, um, if you install OpenSUSE 12.1 or slash 11 SP2 and select ButterFS for the root file system in Yast, all of this will be set up completely. The um, tools will be installed and it works right out, out of the box. And for people who want to maybe use this um, directly, they has, um, we have a C++ library. So a bit about the configuration. So we have a directory, DC snapper configs, where we have for every subvolume you can create a config. Um, this etc sys config is not so important. <coughs> Additionally, we have filters where we can um, avoid that files get rolled back. For example, etc mtop, you don't want to um, simply roll back files like that or X authorities, time drift, and whatever. And we have templates for these configs. When you create um, a new config, you just can create, a, create it from a template. And this time-based and rules for deletion of snapshots is all in this etc snapper configs. So a bit about the command line tool. I will show this um, live then shortly. But you can list your configs, create configs, and these operate on snapshots. It's list, create, modify, delete, and status and diff compared to snapshots. You have to give the numbers. They, um, you get them with list. And status just shows what files has changed, and diff even compares the files. You can also specify what files to com um, compare, and then you have undo change. We call this undo change because we might um, later uh, um, implement also rollback based on mounting old snapshots. And so we have chosen to call this undo change, and snapup cleanup is this cleanup algorithm. It started from the cron job already. Yes. No, no. The um, okay. Um, no, the um, these two numbers. Um, well. Look at the status. Here you compare these two snapshots. Yeah. So you get the file list. And undo change takes the same parameters, and the restore is always done in the current system, in your main system. That's what um, in the UI it's called, and oh, also in the command line tool, it's called snapshot zero. It's always the current system. We always write to the current system. We, and actually, the snapshots we create are read only. So, hmm. so we have a um, Yast UI. Um, yeah, you will see it shortly. Yeah, now I'm going to present this. <laughs> yeah, that's of course a problem. Um, um, the, the question was about race conditions, if something changes in between while um, we do our undo change. <laughs> so, um, so, 
so it's called snapper. We'll start with listing the configurations I have created, or Yas has already created the first config root for the root subvolume that's always called root, and it's the also the default config when you call snapper. If you want to operate on home, you have to tell snapper so. Yes. So the important part, uh, the STA7, or should I maybe also, the type. So we have our root file system on STA7, butterfs, and I have created home with butterfs. <coughs> Boot is on X4. And yeah, that's it. The others are not so important now. And now I can list um, the snapshots available on the root partition. Quite a few, meanwhile, in the meantime. You see the, um, the number there, it's continuously, and when it was created, um, some description, and this type I should explain. Um, we have single letter, single um, snapshots created by the timeline, for example, and we have pre-post, those are those created from Yast and Zypa, where we then compare what has changed in between those mm, two snapshots. So now, for example, we can see what happened during that um, between two runs. Then it lists these modified files a bit like AirSync does. So now we could, for example, create a snapshot. Um, create, we can give a description, test, and tell us to print the number of the new snapshot. And as you see, all of this uh, normal file system, uh, or full file system, it was very, very fast. And here you see the last line, our new snapshot. Mm. Yeah, now something more advanced. We'll start just. So how should I run the system? Can Most things won't work without network, so I'm just going to create a new user. advanced, say it was in the group users and the home directory is local. So now two snapshots should have been created. Yes, you see them, number 65 and 66. Description is the Yast module, and now we can see the difference. Here we see the modified files, so yeah, nothing um, of surprise. Groups, password, shadow, and the new um, Home directory. You can look at the same with the Yast UI. Here we 
randomly selected. And here's a tree which shows all modified files. Um, this bubble here is gray if it's modified and green if it's a new file. So now I can mm, for example I s come to the agreement that it was a bad idea to create this user. I say undo change. It lists it has now modified six files and deleted seventeen. So yeah the home directory was um deleted and ATC password was reverted. Um, next thing I could show is how to create a um, not if I make it with the command line tool. If I make it with the Yast OE it, it creates because uh, the Snapper module of Yast is just a normal Yast module. Again, two snapshots will be created when it started and when it stopped. But no, no, I mean, if mm. you right now you make a Snapper list, it's still listed as a change. Yes, Snapper list just, just shows the old snapshots. They are still there. I can also now um, say it was a mistake to delete this. Then I could. Um, if I swap these numbers, oops, <laughs> whatever failed, but at least now it will be again an etc um, pass vd. There it's again. <coughs> so let's see. I can now show how to create a new configuration snapper create config now I have to give a name for the config I'll call it um, test and then give the directory with the sub volume butterfs and now I could uh, make um, now I already will get timeline um, so hourly snapshots in of this new butterfs volume and with list configs you see the new butterfs mm. I can also show you a bit of about the details um, we create a subfold uh, a directory snapshots now here in the director in the root directory where we have the number of the available snapshots and if I look into one we see one info file it's, it contains the metadata when the snapshot was taken description and so on and otherwise here's the directory snapshot which contains the actually the actual snapshot Okay, any questions? Um, well, is it about the presentation uh, or the demo now or a general question? Okay, then, then let me make my last slide first. So, I want to mention a few ideas we are, or plans we are working on. One thing I would like to see is um, having this integrated in UI or in like in Dolphin or so that if you have a directory you have a I don't know a combo box where you can select um, an old snapshot and then see the content so that it's easier for normal users to use this feature <coughs> another thing is we want to operate on several sub volumes at a time Right now, Yast and Zippo only create a, a snapshots for the root file system, but not for like home or something like that. But there are people who have 
user lib, for example, in, in a snap in a different partition. And then we would also like to make snapshots of that. Otherwise, I'm you are thinking about a DBus interface and making it usable for non-root users. Well, that of course has to be configured, but for for example, a user should be able to create a snapshot of his home directory and delete snapshots of his home directory, okay. something like that. Yes, but um, it's um, only possible per sub volume. So, so if you want this like for home, you should create a sub volume for every home directory. So, and this DBus interface is kind of used for, needed for this non root users. Another thing is maybe look at alpha LVM snapshots within provisioning. They are um, very efficient also. Right now the LVM snapshots, the old ones, um, you have terrible, terrible performance if you have a lot of snapshots, like 100, and your, um, then every change to the main system will cause 100 writes for every, or one write for every um, snapshot you have. And deleting snapshots depending on available space is also something that would be nice. Yes, okay, that's then questions. Yes? Um, if you have if you have the same user as one kind of file, what happens if you have a kind of silo? Um I think it's the new one. So at the end time of the um of the under change. But this could, of course, be modified to um, create the, also copy the M time. Um, yeah, there. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, first question is, um, can we have auto version of file? Uh, uh, Say I export a volume using Samba, for instance, and I want every time that the user changes that Samba volume, which underlying mm -hmm. system is better, I want it to be to create a, a snapshot. Uh, to go back to that version. So, that whenever you, you ask, whenever you write a file, you want it to have to have create a snapshot of that. No, that's not possible as far as I know. Yeah, so, uh, basically, you, the, the it's off. Yeah. Hello. Uh, it's off. I can say it louder. You can use I'm Incron louder. You can use Incron. It's uh, basically a cron uh, that executes scripts for iNode events. So you can make the snapshot uh, on the close right or something like that. Yeah. Integrating a snapper in uh, in Wii file managers, but then it wouldn't work over uh, Samba or NFS, right? Yes, of course. And when you export the volume, so mm -hmm. why not integrating directly but RFS instead of? No? Why should I integrate a snapper, which is a layer over but mm -hmm. RFS? Why well, should I depend on a snapper? You, d you depend uh, on ButterFS. Right, exactly. Why won't they add a, a new layer? Yes, otherwise you don't have snapshots. No, no ButterFS, no snapshots. Yeah. I, I want to have ButterFS, but no snapper. I don't see the point of using snapper and you no, oh, ButterFS, Snapper, Dolphin, for instance, mm. instead of Dolphin directly talking to ButterFS. 
Yeah, but Snapper only gives you the ability to automatically create snapshots, for example, with Yast, and you don't get this from Dolphin. There was one question here. Doesn't work anymore. Hello. Hello. I'll repeat it. Okay. Yes. Ah, no, it works. Nice. So you have a snapshots. Uh, can you consolidate them? I mean, you you have a first version. You create snapshot, 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 and you say, okay, everything is okay. I want everything to consolidate in the same thing. Do you understand the question? Do I explain myself clearly? Mm. You have first version, you install SUSE, for instance, right? Yes, but if everything is fine with your fifth snapshot, you can delete it for, before that, for them. But every, t every snapshot is a complete, um, it doesn't depend on the other snapshots or anything like that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, thank you. Um, which parts of Snapper are distribution specific? Uh, which parts can be ported to other distros? Um, I think everything can be ported to other distros. Mm. And I think here was another question there. Uh, how will ButterFS behave uh, under heavy disk usage? For example, the TFS have uh, problems with uh, that kinds of situations. Yes, well, I'm maybe not the right person to ask because I'm not developing ButterFS myself. Um, well, we'll support it with slash 11 sp2. That's enough for an answer. So you get full level 3 support if you want. So it should be rather, um, rather stable. Okay, one more question. Once you've enabled uh, snapshots and then you start reading, where, like, you must incur a penalty at some point for some type of operation. What, what's the, what's, where, where do you pay the penalty? You pay it in disk space. Um, first, when you create a snapshot, that does not need um, new disk space. It's just one block of metadata. But of course, if you modify files, and you, then you have two different versions in snapshots, then of course the difference is saved. And so if you, for example, um, yeah, I mean, if you modify the RPM database, for example, you will always, um, and it's rewritten completely, so no blocks are the same, then you always lose like five megabytes or something like that. Yeah, do we have time still? Or? Not really. Not really, okay, and I think I'll, we'll stop it here. Uh, thanks.